Yeah, hold on. Hold on. Right there. All right. And now it's time to introduce Caroline Baldwin, who's going to show you and tell you how to grow things green. <laughs> <laughs> we are at that point in the, the week. This It's Tuesday. It's St. Patrick's Day. So we're going to talk about green things in the garden with Caroline. If you have a question during the course of this show, you can be on the show with Caroline, whether it's a question or just to want to call in and say, Happy St. Patrick's Day or something. Sure, whatever, yeah. That's right. The number is 622-9622. You have to adjust your, your dials because Caroline is wearing a beautiful green shirt. <laughs> but, but, but you might need to adjust the dial just the tag. You just would have to add some yellow into <laughs> it, and it'll be a great shade of green, won't it? That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm wearing half of the color of green. That's true. Green is not yeah. a primary color. Right. So. so I'm just wearing half of it, but that's, it was kind of going, but the only thing I could have done was socks. <sighs> yeah, and I yeah, 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 it really wouldn't have matched. Yeah. I got yeah. some underwear that's green, but yeah, they weren't I, I, purchased that way. No, just, I, you, you know, <laughs> that that and you're not really going to go. Somebody's going, oh, you're not wearing green. Oh, yes, I am. You want to see? And no, that's not going <laughs> to happen. No, <laughs> no, nobody's going to care. So I just got to watch out. I don't but get I think, pinched I, all day. I think, and I, if somebody can correct me, I think green is a primary color in light. It's not a primary right. color in paint, right? But it is right. in light. I, in, I, I never yeah, in the that spectrum, whole thing. right? Of a rainbow, you get you know, I don't know. You get, I guess, all of the colors the actually, thing. because they will blend from the sun. In light from the sun, right? Did, did you ever see the spectrum of of another star? That uh, they don't. Every star doesn't have the right. same spectrum. There, doesn't there have are different the same light. There are wavelengths that we can't see, so they just show up on the spectrum as blank spots. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so that, that's kind of cool. You know, it's a museum or something. Yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah. I, in order to answer the phone, I have to push the green button ah. and then say hello. Good morning. You're on the air with Caroline. Yeah, good. Uh, happy day. Happy St. Patrick's Day, you guys. And you. You, you know they say if you're good at gardening, you got a green thumb. There you go. Right. Uh, now that's something I've never been accused of. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you have dirty uh, fingernails. I the paper this morning uh, in uh, uh, 1988. Uh, it was 28 degrees for a record low on this date. So we're still a little bit uh, not out of the woods yet, I think. So I'm going to hold off on putting those flowers in my. Uh, circles i've got in the front and backyard for another week or two uh i i already i've gone for it my tomatoes are in the ground corn's in it's time yeah. to go for it just just get out there and get, give it your all yeah i don't yeah. think we're, i don't think looking at any long-term forecasts we're not seeing anything that's you know gonna be anything it, it looks detrimental like uh, look, it looks like we're gonna be above normal this month yeah yeah i believe so i believe so it's just hey this year we got lucky uh march is not usually this pretty of a month normally the first half of the month has a tendency to be you know com comes in like a lion you know with the the cold and those last you know remaining uh torturesome weeks of of winter letting us know and this this year actually because uh, you know i hate the cold weather and the counting down of the time till spring and it's going you know what we've already had two great weeks i you know I, i'm counting but it's already here it's just not on the calendar yet yeah, I, I keep in touch with the loved ones up in the Wisconsin where I'm from, and uh, they had a, another atrocious uh, winter up there. Uh, uh, not too much snow, but enough snow, but uh, a continuous cold. And uh, but yesterday in Milwaukee it was 72 degrees, so you know even up there they're getting oh. a, a nice break. That's a, that is, and that's you know hopefully they don't get all that warm too quickly so that any of the snow melt doesn't I, I have heard they have had some in some of the northern states some issues with some flooding but that becomes the big issue is you know for them a lot of the annual moisture for the area comes in the form of snowfall and then snow melt and if it melts off real quickly you've got you know some flooding issues going on a lot of runoff right because the, the ground is still frozen right like you say it's it's a runoff and it does no bite, nobody any good, you know. Right, it just yeah, it ends up in the at the lakes, rivers, and streams, and then flooding the banks and 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 that, and then that's causing even more problems because of erosion and other and other things. Yeah, 
I, I, I got a feeling that we're going to have a very warm, oh, we always have warm summers down here, <laughs> but uh, the Middle West is going to have a very hot summer. Yeah. Uh, I read a place in the paper about uh, the, the way the pattern, kind of a pattern change taking place after a very cold, kind of late, with late winter, it's going to be a very warm and a very hot uh, yeah. late spring and early summer. So yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens, just as long as we get the moisture. That's, that's always the main thing. That's all we need. Just make sure we get some rain. That's a <laughs> okay, I, I'm sorry. I, I missed the garden show this week, and I was on my way, and uh, we had a kind of a family emergency out of town, and I had a, we had to run down to uh, Orlando uh, real quick, so, and it turned out to be not too big of a deal. But I, I, I was looking forward to go out seeing a show, and uh, uh, my wife had drove by at, the, uh, at one time there and said there was a lot of cars out there, so it must have been very big. It was. A, it, they did have a real good. We had a real good turnout this year. Um, attendance might have been down a little bit i think it was such a pretty weekend i think people went to the beach or yeah, something right, right, that, right. you know take advantage <laughs> yeah. of that first real good one and 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 hit the beach or or whatever but yeah it was it was a real good event as as usual is that just a one big garden show a year that's the bit that is um for the master gardeners and pretty much for marion county it is the big um, garden show. It brings out all the vendors and things, and all, and then the master gardeners put together the educational opportunities uh, that go on at the same time. Now, in I think it's in May, and then again, I believe it's October. They have the plant sales, which are master gardener grown plants, and that's just more of a fundraiser to be able to put on some of the programs that we do throughout the year. Yeah, uh, hopefully I'll be able to make it next year. So. Yeah. Well, anyways, have a good uh, St. Patrick's Day, and uh, uh, nice talk, and, and uh, goodbye. All righty. Have a great day. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, he said, you know, that they say, you know, with gardening, you end up with a green thumb. I think, moreover, if your thumb's green, it's getting a little moldy. <laughs> but if you got dirty fingernails, you know you've been in the garden. That's <laughs> right. Uh, you have another phone call. Sure. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I have a question about the bell peppers. Okay. I used to in years past think that orange, red, yellow, and green peppers came from different plants, but now I know since growing them that they all come from the same plant. In, in this, why Bonnie sells, and I bought them this year, a red bell pepper plant and all the different colored bell pepper plants. What's the difference of the Be, red bell pepper because, plant and the green? Because they, they are different, actually. Because some peppers will ripen from green is the, the starting point to a nice bright red. That was the one I think that was around first. Um, and that's fully ripe, it will be red. There's other ones when fully ripe will be, will be yellow. Uh, the green is actually an underripe stage, that we, but we still enjoy it. Right, but they are two different. Actually, I believe they are two two different peppers because there's even some varieties that are a. Um, it's not really a bell pepper, but it is a sweet pepper. The yummy is a little bit different shade of orange. Um, it's not a real bright orange, but it's a different shade. But that's the only color. It's green or it's orange. Um, jalapenos go to red. Uh, most there's some of the more ornamental peppers that'll actually have some of the purples and stuff where that's just a phase of the the uh, fruit. So the ones that they're selling as a red bell pepper, what that'll be is when it's mature, it'll be a red pepper. Uh, the yellow ones will be a yellow bell pepper when they're mature. Okay, so like the yellow bell pepper plants when it turns to yellow uh -huh. then if you leave it on longer it probably won't change color to right. orange or red right okay now also on my banana peppers which grow tremendously uh -huh. uh, those I watch them change stages from the yellow mm -hmm. to orange to red and I usually pick them when they're red right but so, okay. the, yeah, some of those because it's coming through as a different, you know, with, with like, say, a Cubanella or the other peppers that are much more pale in their starting color. They're not a dark, dark green that you may pick up on some of those little bit other colors. But that's just a ripening phase. 
right it's right. not quite to the you know so that's where you'll get you know it's a, it starts out as a you know the yellow wax hungarian wax is yellow but then and it as it matures and it and you notice the difference in the flavor as well oh, yeah. if you take a green bell pepper and and have a piece of it and a red bell pepper the sweetness in the red bell pepper is is much higher and you've I, increased your um vitamin c content as well as well as i'm sure adding the lycopene has probably actually come in on the ripening process that probably really wasn't there in the green form yeah right correct okay well that's that answered my question yeah. and i thank you very much oh you're welcome right, thank you have a good day you thank too. you thanks and we need to take a little sure. break we'll be right back if you want to call the show 622-9622 we'll be right back with carol ann the weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Plenty of sunshine on the way for today. will be nice and warm for the afternoon, high 85 to 87. Tonight, a mainly clear sky, low 60 to 65. Partly sunny for tomorrow. Can't rule out a shower. High tomorrow, 79 to 84. Then as we get into the day on Thursday, we'll have some sunshine once again. High Thursday, 79 to 84. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Brian Thompson. PPIR is a networking group formed to serve the realtor and small business community. It primarily serves the real estate and construction industry, but is open to all businesses that provide any service or products to the real estate business community. PPIR has no membership dues or fees for attendees. The watchwords are keep it simple and maximize networking time. PPIR chapters generally meet once a month after business hours. For the information on this, call 352-615-9412 or go to events at PPIRevents.com. PPIR, professional people in real estate. Is your credit headed in the wrong direction? If so, Florida Credit Union can help turn it around. If the signs are reading missing payments, maxing out cards, or borrowing from financing companies, it's time to steer your credit to safety. Pull into a Florida Credit Union today and let us help you map out a personalized credit management plan. Get a free credit report analysis and advice to help you consolidate wisely. A better plan can get you to a better place. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Federally insured by the NCUA. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara, and me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA The Source. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line and a new spoiler and a new Yep, and we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. It's like a morning spring In the lilt of Irish laughter You can hear the angels sing All right, 18 minutes after 9 o'clock, let's return to Caroline Baldwin. This is St. Patrick's Day with some of the goofiest songs ever, Caroline. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that some... <laughs> it's just not a bad they're, song. They're just, some of them are very fun or <laughs> entertaining for sure. Yeah, and you have a, a phone call. Great. Somebody waiting to chat with you. Good morning. You're on there with Caroline. Good morning, Caroline. Good morning. Uh, I just want to thank all the master gardeners and everybody who worked so hard to make that a wonderful garden show, and we really enjoyed it. We always learned something, and it's a pleasure to go there. <laughs> well, great, great. I'm glad you do. Um, I wanted to ask you about two plants. Okay. Uh, uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do we have to do with that? <laughs> but what do you, what do you have to do with it? So, it? So I mean, does it need uh, full sun, partial shade? Where does it do best in the it's. Uh, I, I think you're going to find it's going to do better if you can put it that it that it does get some a little bit of light shade in the afternoon. Lots of lots and lots of morning sun is going to be great, but the okay. um, 
otherwise I'd be going with something where you're going to filter, you know, have a little more of a filtered light, uh, a high, um, excuse me, a high canopy where it just, it can let the light through. It can have light all day. Like on the edge of uh, oak trees. Or yeah, yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. And does it need a lot of water or any special Not, not necessarily any, any extra water. Um, other than, you know, when you're first putting it in, of course, it's going to want, yeah. you know, uh, supplemental water for several weeks. But after that, just uh, once it's in the ground, maybe in the during this drier time of the year here in uh, March into April until our summer rains start, you may need to give it some supplemental water um you know, like say every ten days to two weeks. Okay, it is, does better in the ground than in the pot. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's a All slow right. grower, next, but it'll but it'll be fine. The next plant was a desert rose. Oh, okay. Desert is rose, that great. A container plant. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that that is, and. Um, they do seem to they can get top heavy so make sure you get a pot that's going to give have enough weight and and enough width to it but usually you don't want them too wide you know it, they seem to like to be a little bit pot bound oh, okay and but they don't want to get over watered you will rot out that uh oh, well, that well, so yeah that thing a, is in a, a hurry cactus type they had little ones at the show, and I hesitated to get one, but I saw one, and it is so pretty. I just loved it, and I want to get they're, one someday. They're, they're gorgeous, yeah. If you can put them, they, they do like a lot. They like plenty of sun, but they do not want all the water. So if you have it in a container, in the summertime, it's going to need to be brought up where it's out from under, the, under all that rain, unless you've got plenty of plenty of drainage, because it, they will. They'll rot. Uh, as yeah, quick as you can. Yeah, mine had one on her patio, so it was covered, and it it was doing great. Right. I don't know what exposure is best for it. Um, north south. Plenty of sun, because uh, okay. in the winter time you would be bringing it in, because again they're not going to take the the cold weather. Okay. But they'll uh, they'll uh, you know do with you know lot lots of sun, well drained soil. Um, and bring them in in the in the cold weather i would probably just you know if you're looking to for if you're putting it if say you get a real little one and you want to put it into a pot that it's going to be in for the next year um most potting mixes have fertilizer in it but if you have something that doesn't if it doesn't say it has any read the back of the bag um something like a dynamite you know where you're just going to feed it once a year Okay. And it's just a steady, slow release. And if you figure on transplanting, and this is kind of a rule of thumb almost for any house plant type thing or containerized uh, or plant that's can and should be containerized, is like once a year to, to take it out of its pot, even if you're going to restrict it and keep it in that same size pot, putting all fresh soil and a good slow release fertilizer, and then you don't have to worry about fertilizing it all year long. Yeah, okay. Then you're set. That's good. Okay. Our, yeah, all our plants, are, our yard did good until that last freeze. And that last <laughs> one got you, did it? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They yeah. that was uh, oh, that, that was, was a rough severe. one. <laughs> that one, yeah, that one was a rough one. I think everybody who um, uh, you know had anything that they had uh, had you know either forgotten about or we had had such a mild winter that some of the stuff may have even been trying to come back up already I know our and peach tree was and i don't know if any of the peaches survived it was oh, a beautiful bloom right <laughs> there it goes and then and that's it all she can do is is hope for the best unfortunately with our with the requirements in florida to have such a low chilling hour um sometimes they break that dormancy a little bit early and you know that next thing you know you've already got buds and possibly even small fruit forming and we have that last late cold um that it it just wipes out everything hopefully it hopefully it didn't hopefully at least you get a few yeah i know that's florida (laughs) yeah that's it that's it what what we sometimes lose in the in the line of having great weather most the rest of the year we we may lose in some fruit occasionally all right, thank you. You're have welcome. Day. You too. Thank you. And uh, Carolyn, you have another phone call. Well, you did. You did. Oh. Is there somebody there? 
No, they, they ended up, okay. Well, you call back. The number yeah. is 622 if you want to call. I want to, just so that I don't forget, because I have to keep going back and forth on this, uh, it, this isn't something, something coming up real quick, but it's a, one of those mark your calendar for April 10th and 11th. If you're interested in African violets which are really kind of a neat plant. They're a specialty plant, definitely a specialty plant, kind of a collector type thing. But they're having a big show over at the Livestock Pavilion in the in the in one of the big uh, halls over there. Uh, and it will be a judge, judged show as well as a sale. Uh-huh. So these people are competing on each other they're and African serious, violets. Huh? Yeah, these are taken seriously. They're they're interesting, and apparently they're going to have some that'll be for sale. That'll be some of the unique, the ones that you're not going to find in local stores. These people are collectors. These are the kind of plants people collect, like um, orchids. There's African violets, some other plants that people actually just they collect them. But it's um, it's put on by the um, what is it? The Ocala. Uh, African Violet Club of, of Ocala, which is a bunch of enthusiasts, nonprofit group uh, from the Ocala, greater Ocala area that meet monthly um, at 1030 on the fourth Saturday of the month at the uh, Sheriff's substation out there on State Road 200. And it, with the exception of November and December. But if you want more information, you're interested in African violets as a hobby, possibly as a club, uh, I would go ahead and email her. It's Carol Lee, C A R O L E E, uh, violets, V I O L E T S, at gmail.com. Hmm. I think I, that sounds like a familiar name to me. Yeah. And you have a, a phone call, Carol Ann. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Hey, good morning. This is Todd. How are you? Okay, good morning. What's up? Hey, good morning. This is Todd. How are you? Real good. Good morning. What's up? <laughs> um, I have a question about pineapple plants. I'm okay. on my fifth generation pineapple plant right now from my original plant. All right. How long should I, how long do they reproduce or continue from the original pineapple plant? Or should I pull the original and discard because everything that I'm finding says it's like only a two, per, it only produces like twice. Yeah, they usually, I mean, you're lucky to get it that that same, it's the same exact plant has come up and, and produced for you, or is it the uh, successive generation of pups from underneath that's that's producing? It's actually the successive generation of pups, but uh, I've taken the the, uh, the original and every time, well, from that pup, I've I've transplanted and, and produced another pineapple plant. So it's like, should I pull up a, after the after the original production and then re, reproduce again? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would separate. Yeah, once it it comes up and it makes its pineapple, taking those pups off once that's finished and they're of some size and and replanting those. And that's that. I mean, that's just the way that they're done. I mean, that's because each of those plants is a new plant. Okay, I wasn't really sure yeah. how to do that. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to experiment with all this and and trying to get a good a good. Uh, a good grip on growing pineapple and i'm actually having really good luck in florida in ocala that's growing pineapple, so. that's that's pretty good you're probably putting forth a little extra effort than most people would because of the temperatures uh how, how about how long has it taken you to get a pineapple from um from say a pup about 18 months yeah 18 to 24 months yeah uh, is, is about what i'm what i'm showing and then like during the really cold i'm like i cover them up with a heavy blanket and they stay well so oh good good so we've been yeah even with that heavy even with that real bad weather well that's one thing i mean they are actually a pretty good sized plant and they're an attractive plant um and yeah about oh just out of curiosity about how how big are your pineapples that you're getting off of them regular uh well the first the first two were um uh five to six but now i'm starting to get with my fifth generation plant right now the last one just generated and i got an, uh, about a 10 inch pineapple nice so, nice nice no, cool so it, yeah it was really yeah it, it it yellows at the bottom and then i start i had to figure out when they actually pick it right so. right oh that's that's right. cool that's great thank you thank, thank you, you. Thanks for the call. 
All right, the phone lines are open, but we are up against the bottom of the hour break, so we need to take that little break, and we'll be right back. That is cool. He's growing pineapples. Yeah, that's great. Pineapples are so cool. And pineapples are delicious. Oh, they are. They're good stuff. I it love just, pineapple. It's just tough to cut, right? They are. They are. I bet you he's got one of those tools <laughs> that'll that'll just, cut Let's just do yeah. it real quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll take a little break and be right back with Carol Ann Baldwin. If you want to be on the show to, with a question or just want to comment on something, the number is 622-9622. We'll take your calls during the break. If you want, and you'll be on hold, but Otherwise, we'll be back in about two and a half minutes. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Overnight, a United Airlines plane forced to make an emergency landing with an out-of-control passenger rushing toward the cockpit. Left heading 190. Uh, we had a passenger becoming violent. No weapon involved. He's restrained by other passengers now, though. We don't know his mental condition, but uh, it sounds like he's restrained for now. We just need to get on the ground. That's a cockpit audio from United Flight 1074, courtesy of ATC.net. A spokesman for United Airlines says the passenger failed to comply with crew instructions and was detained upon landing. The man was taken to a hospital to be checked out. They returned to Dulles International Airport shortly after takeoff late yesterday. That flight landed finally at 2.30 a.m. Denver time. Fox Radio's Tanya J. Powers. Iran nuclear talks resuming in Switzerland today and home construction plunging 17 percent in February. Fox News. We report. You decide. I'm a state-of-the-art 60-inch flat-screen TV. And I mean, not to brag or anything, but if a burglar ever breaks into this place, I'm pretty certain I'm the first thing he's going to steal. I mean, it's not like he's going to take that recliner over there. (laughs) Or that coffee table. (laughs) Your stuff can't protect itself. That's why the GEICO Insurance Agency helps make it easy to switch and save on renter's insurance. Renter's insurance will cover personal property loss or damage as well as provide liability protection. Visit GEICO.com today. You're running your business, and we at Wix.com know things can get stressful. But creating your website doesn't have to be. With Wix, you can create a professional website all by yourself. It's easy and free. You don't have to be a programmer. Just drag and drop everything into place. It's your website, your style. Show the world what you can do. Go to Wix.com and create your own stunning website today. It's easy and free. Black Cow Composted Cow Manure is a terrific organic soil amendment. We start with cow manure from dairy farms and then compost it a full 90 days. The result is an all-natural, dark, rich soil amendment that's great for everything you grow. Flowers, vegetables, shrubs, trees, and lawns, too. Look for Black Cow in the bright yellow and black bag at your favorite nursery or garden center. Black Cow, the mature manure, Black Cow. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. In a study involving more than 2,000 people, those with slimmer waistlines showed higher cognitive ability than those who were overweight or obese. Our pets improve our character and make us much better people. If your partner's the one who's stressed out, we know that you will be 25% more likely to be affected than a stranger would be. Yeah, be careful because stress is contagious. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Do you have areas that have started sagging or drooping? Is what you're looking at not quite the same as it was years ago? Are there enhancements you've been putting off? Is there serious damage you need fixed? Then call on us, Damage Control Services. When your roof is sagging and the drywall is drooping after a storm, or your home just needs some enhancements from damage repairs to new construction, Damage Control Services is here to help. All right, 26 minutes before 10 o'clock. Your phone calls are invited. The number is 622-9622. Caroline Baldwin is your host right now. The show is called In the Garden with Caroline. Um, just thinking, you know, that it is St. Patty's Day, and I made mention of this earlier, so that people, you know, coming around go, you know, how can, how can we find that, you know, get the shamrock plant? And, and I told you, well, that it's 
in our area, it's a weed. It's a weed. See, it, that's amazing to me. Yeah. That now, it does can, it have four leaves on it? Does it look? No, the, I mean, it's it's because four leaf clovers are you know a little different. So it's, it's a bigger. The, it's a bigger the ox, plant, the oxalis right? The oxalis is one because it's oxalis or wood sorrel, is and it's something that grows but are wild. The, are here. the leaves the size of a? Uh, like a half they're dollar? About, yeah, actually, yeah, okay, they're yeah, the, like that. when they're grown in a pot, they are. And actually, you'll find them in the in the yard that they'll do like that. Out in the yard, when they come up, you go to pull them up. And all you're doing is you're pulling up and you get a real long stem. But the, underneath the ground is like a little nut. It's a little chrome that's oh, under really? there. Um, it, it's rough. It looks... Looks good. Well, it looks like a little bulb, or yeah, you know, with many little bulb bulblets on it, um, and that's how they're grown, and that's why it's so hard to get rid of in the landscape. Well, is, is, but you know, they have a little. Some of them have purple flowers. Some of them have yellow. Right, right. The lavendery pink flower. Is garlic a, a bulb? Yes. So garlic yeah. would grow a plant. Yes. Oh, okay. And then reproduce. What do we use the, the plant for? Anything? The top of the plant? No, not really. Really. But I mean, except that it would stink and maybe help repel. So other, you, you could you know, buy a garlic stuff. in the in the produce you section and plant garlic. it. You could, yeah. That's a whole bowl. But what you would do would take and separate that out into all the little cloves, and then you would plant the clove of garlic. Really, and that would grow and a garlic plant. That would plant. grow a garlic plant. Really, because growing garlic from seed. I mean, and you can grow it from seed too, because eventually it will put up a seed head, allowing you to. Huh. You know, to go from seed. Seed for onions and garlic and stuff is actually fairly small. Almost looks like um, big ground pepper. So, <laughs> Joe. It, it, Joe, Joe make it for, oh, he's got his beads. What'd you do to get those beads, Joe? <laughs> no, what do you got to do yeah, to get, you, get his beads? No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Say please. Oh. No, um... But the oxalis, because it's, it's funny, because at different times of year, people do, they get looking for things like air plants. Uh, you know, you find the little ones that are glued into the magnets at the, you know, at the uh, little tourist stops and things like that. That's ball moss that grows in our trees. Oh, really? And, and you know, here the, the oxalis, it's, it's a plant that grows here in the ground that you could actually you could go dig that up and go plant a few in a pot and you will have a very pretty it is a very pretty plant but it is what we would and what is a weed but a plant growing where you don't want that's it to. it that's it yeah um, by so. the way we were at uh, the silver river state park uh -huh. silver river side of the silver spring state park is what i go. should say uh and i was just looking up at the trees and i noticed that the the new leaves mm -hmm. Have this light green, almost yeah. translucent yeah, effect to them. It's just so pretty. They're new. The pale, pale yeah, yeah, yeah. sheen that, that makes you look out and across and yeah. go, ooh, that's not brown anymore. Yeah, and but, you can really. Yeah. Good morning, Patsy. Hey, good morning. And, and you have a phone call, Caroline. Good morning. You're on the air with Caroline. Hey, good morning, Caroline. Good morning, Larry. Good morning. Hey, Joe. Uh, Caroline, verify yeah. for me, and I've heard this from more than one person. Y'all were talking about pineapples earlier. Yeah. How? How can Spanish moss be related to the pineapple plant? I've heard that it's the same plant genus, but I, I really don't see it. I'll hang up. And Doesn't taste answer. like Thank it. <laughs> the, yeah, the ball moss, um, pineapple plants, bromeliads are all within the same family. They're not exact. You know, they're different species within the same family um if you ever look really closely at a ball moss uh when it's blooming because yes they they actually they do bloom you will you will see that the flower comes up that same way though the leaves are are a gray green not a whole lot of um chlorophyll going on through there but they are a very similar structure and that most of the time your bromeliads are grown or are just they're supported by in a very peat like area so it's not really a big root zone they are i think a little more terrestrial than how we treat them and and really the same way as a pineapple it's in just very um I'm, I'm not sure how, how widespread the, the root zone there is on a pineapple, but I know on your other bromeliads, there's not a whole lot of root there with 
the size of the plant and and the same thing you know with, when you're talking about like the uh, the ball moss there is no roots it's just sort of attached I mean the roots are just there to to hold it in place but not you know they're not penetrating the tree bark or anything stealing nutrient they're just they're just there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as something to give it support to hold it in place but that's um that they are a little more just all of them are more terrestrial actually even though we put them in put them in the ground or you find them growing um in areas that it's it's real loose and that I, you know i found that so there's not a whole lot of root zone when, when a plant is really or especially an edible plant mm-hmm. is related to another plant mm-hmm. is there any r- practical use for that uh, for that knowledge i mean what do you do with that knowledge when something is related to the other thing when it it's moreover in vegetable gardening or for pest issues pest or disease issues right. is where that knowledge because the the you get plants all in the nightshade family. Tomatoes are in the nightshade family. Peppers are in the nightshade family. So are potatoes. Um, so if you're doing a crop rotation in your garden, you need to know this so that you're not just going, well, last year I planted tomatoes there. I can grow potatoes this winter. Well, no, you're going within the same family again. Oh, and I so see. So pest, you want to play a pest different pressures, pe- plant a different right, family. You would do okay. a different family because of pest pressures or disease pressures that may be beginning to build up because it's something that would attack certain things from the same family. Okay. So you know, you, just just like kind of in humans or or in or in our pets there's certain illnesses that may trace through a family. You know, you, the, your family has a predisposition but, to diabetes for example, you would need to watch your own you know health but it's just something that you know so, uh, grandparents and great grandparents and da 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 uh same kind of thing in plants is going these these plants are all affected or can be affected by the same pressures by the same out you know disease issues insect issues and i'm going to say something and you just yeah. tell me if i'm if i'm yeah. on target or do yeah. i understand this so one family of plants mm-hmm would extract from the soil and re- and put into the soil different things than another family. Correct. Correct. Or yeah, uh beans for example um are a great addition or any of any legume into the garden because their roots actually fix what they say fix nitrogen to the soil. They actually add back to the soil. Okay, and, uh, and that would and be good for source. somebody That's, else, some that other be, crop. That would be good for another crop that might be a heavy feeder that you're going to plant in there next. Corn is an extremely heavy feeder. Uh, so you can't plant so the same thing or anything from the same family you, over you and over and over you again. You shouldn't put it in the same spot over and over again because you can have, um, again, a, a, either a depletion in the soil of something that's a heavy feeder, huh. um, you could have uh, a, a buildup of disease problems, even though you may switch out something taking out disease plants, still that, that organism could be present in the soil. Okay. Same way with pests, that if some pests will overwinter or overseason eggs and things like that underground, and if you put another plant of that same family in there, those pests come up and they can just continue to eat and consume, you know, or, or spread the, the diseases and things like that. Um, that's that's where the crop rotation really. So I'm comes guessing in. that's applicable to a farm, but your little four by four garden, you're gonna four by t- four you're gonna till that and is, mess it up is, anyway, right? Your four by four garden becomes a little harder to be able to rotate, except if you're doing things like. Um, maybe during part of the year you either you can leave it empty you're amending it a lot more than what you would um if people are growing in containers they may actually change the soil out every year you know you might use it Mm -hmm. um from march through january and you're getting ready to do the garden again that soil goes somewhere in a flower bed and you're putting fresh soil in so that helps to get rid hmm. of some of those issues because the commercial potting mixes are generally they start out sterile they're you know a sterile mix uh, so you're not bringing pathogens in initially you may bring them in in a, in a transplant if you didn't have that growing but the same kind of thing is that you can also starve out a disease problem by not planting that plant oh, okay. for about okay. five years um, 
impatience you don't i know you may not know what the little impatient flower looks like uh cute little plant for shade they were they're considered an annual but be, can become kind of perennialized so long as they don't freeze off too bad and you have a piece of it survive it will come back but downy mildew came through where it came in at nobody really knows huh. um but landscapers and some of these are like big million dollar jobs one day they plan everything in they come back a week later and the stuff's dead impatience came off the market for five years all right we're up against the clock so right. we'll take a little break if you want to call carolyn the phone number is 622-9622 talk about your garden say happy st patrick's day what is that st patrick's day yep, Saint and we'll be right back <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Plenty of sunshine on the way for today. will be nice and warm for the afternoon, high 85 to 87. Tonight, a mainly clear sky, low 60 to 65. Partly sunny for tomorrow. Can't rule out a shower. High tomorrow, 79 to 84. Then as we get into the day on Thursday, we'll have some sunshine once again. High Thursday, 79 to 84. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Brian Thompson. Are you still fertilizing flowers and vegetables the old-fashioned way? Then switch to Dynamite Premium Plant Food. The secret to more flowers, bigger blooms, and more vegetables is consistent feeding. Dynamite Premium Plant Food is formulated for our Florida climate and has a unique coating that releases nutrition consistently. So there are no peaks and no valleys. Dynamite is just a terrific product. It even contains the micronutrients plants need in small quantities for maximum growth. With Dynamite, you get an explosion of color, flowers, and vegetables. Dynamite comes in a handy shake and feed plastic bottle. Just one application will last up to six months. For more flowers, bigger blooms, and more vegetables, try Dynamite Premium Plant Food today. Look for Dynamite at your Home Depot or Lowe's Garden Department. Visit on the web at dynamiteplantfood.com. Looking for some real bargains in spring color? Then, my friends, your first stop is Bob Wines Camellia Gardens in Ocala. Featuring specials like these in this week's ad. African Violets, just $2.99. Rieger Begonias, $5.99. Calancho, $4.99. Crown of Thorns, just $4.99. Bob's got a huge selection of gorgeous hanging baskets starting at $9.99. And how about this BOGO? You buy a Gardenia Daisy for $9.99 and you get one free. Spring veggies by the four-pack, just $2.49. For your choice of a gigantic selection and a couple of your favorite bulbs, Rain Lily, just $0.39. Cents. Caladium, $0.85. Cents. Truckload sale still going on with hundreds of azaleas, including popular Duke de Rhone's, only $2.99. Don't wait. Get your share of the savings now at Bob Wine's Camellia Gardens, Southeast 38th Street, Ocala. Daily till 5, Saturdays till 4. Locally grown, home-owned since 1952. Hi, Danny Warfel here. Get moving with Florida Credit Union's fast and easy loan approval process. Let Florida Credit Union start up a new car loan for you today. No more waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. With a strong financial team behind you, you can enjoy great rates and fast approvals. It's all about personalized service and a streamlined process. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. All right, it's uh, 12 minutes before 10 o'clock. I just found my uh, trivia question for the end of the show. Cool. The uh, trivia question will win somebody a $20 gift certificate to Bob Wine's Camellia Gardens and Nursery. And you can buy some green things on this St. Patrick's that's Day. That's so true. Yes. Yeah, yep. But um, just to just to go back to finish up what we were saying was that you know the starving things out that on on with the impatients they're coming back to the market because they've they apparently starved out by not planting this plant not even growing it for about five years. Um, another thing in in the vegetable garden you start to get some disease issues like a black rot that uh, that'll affect your cabbages or your and I can never say your brassius family of plants, uh -huh. and it will go through your broccoli, your cauliflower, your cabbage, all of those. And you don't know how you got it in there. You may have brought it in in a contaminated seedling. Um, spores may, you know, who knows how it got there. But the only way to truly get rid of it is to not plant those items for several years so that you starve it out. Just a season is not enough. 
Uh, you may be able to hurry up the process on something in a vegetable garden by solarizing, but I would still say you had a problem with your cabbage this year where it was rotting before you got head formation. Um, would be to, to solarize at some point this summer and not plant any again in, in the winter time and maybe even try another solarization the next summer before you actually put any in the yeah, ground. But yeah. usually you want to let that go two or three years in order to just let that organism die on its own because it'll over it will just sit there dormant if you if you don't go long enough and we did have one question off the air mm -hmm. wondering whether or not it was too late to to trim crepe myrtles um it kind of is only because they're getting ready to leaf out and crepe myrtles bloom on new growth if it was just the matter of removing a few branches, the water suckers that come up off the bottom, those can come off at any time. I would, pro I would probably let it go ahead and and do its thing right now. After it does that first flush of blooms, you can always trim it a little bit. You're just kind of cutting off those flowers, and it'll bloom again. Um, and you can do that a couple of times if they're not too big. That's, I know, sometimes the, the issue of wanting to go, I, I want to bring it back down to size. I would wait. We're already at the middle of March. They should have been done at least a month ago, um, you know, probably even anywhere between, you know, four to six weeks ago. So if any pruning didn't get done, I would keep it very limited because you may, you'll, you'll just, you'll delay your flowering because right, right, right. uh, they should be, you know, they do flower on all new growth. Do you know what was amazing to me is how quickly things came alive. It's like, it was like freezing cold one day. Yeah. The next day it was like springtime weather and, and the weeds were growing. The mosquitoes were back. I had yeah. roaches again. The leaves were on the trees. It's like, it's like overnight, uh, every, suddenly, everything started everything waking up. Everything new. Well, I think you saw the weeds is because the grass turned brown again and all the weeds popped up. But in some areas, actually, a lot of the weeds actually got burned. So they were probably a little more of a warmer season weed that was trying to come up earlier. Mm. And then we had that last, that 27 degrees, knocked those ones out. Um, and, you know, so you get rid of those. And, and I will say, if you... We're getting ready. You can start to get ready to, to fertilize the lawn anytime between now and the end of the month. Is put a put a good turf fertilizer down. Name brand is not near as important as to me as going with a slow release. Uh, and if you're looking to try to not even do anything, you know, don't want to get into a high maintenance one. Something like a malorganite, something like a black cow, um, just across the lawn will feed. It'll feed the soil, help to nourish it. It's you're not going to get that huge, super quick growth. Um, which a lot of people don't want anyway because it proper fertilization, proper watering, and things like that help to slow down weed growth. They will also keep disease issues uh, a little more in check as well as insect problems. You know, it's, it's all in that fertilization and watering that um, we generally mess it up and, and, bring, and, and bring the pest issues and things like that upon ourselves. Uh, if you want to call in, uh, the number six two two nine six two two. I have a, a trivia question in a little I, while. Yeah, I couldn't see the clock from no, there. Being oh no, our other got, one's, not, well, our other one's not operating I there. know. I, I thought it was. Just <laughs> Another new battery. <laughs> but, um, yeah, coming through um, with just uh, some of those other spring things, if you haven't gotten your, you know, it's too, really too late to try to start your tomato plants from seed. Uh, get you some seedlings to begin with. If you're... Um, a lot of people are traditionalists. They want the heirlooms. There are heirlooms that can be purchased out on, you know, from some some of the growers are, are growing the heirlooms. The uh, Rutgers isn't actually in an heirloom, but it's been around long enough. It's kind of considered one. Um, it's a good tomato. I still will go with hybrids, but I usually go with the older hybrids, mm -hmm. the early girl. Um, Celebrity is not a real old one, but it's it's old enough. Some of the Goliath, even beefsteak is, is an old, old variety. Better boy, big boy. Uh, they have some disease resistance. They have that... Um, ability to help cope with some of those those issues that that can come about especially if you're a bit of a novice in the garden uh so i like to look for the that when i'm planting more than the the because i've heirlooms you've got to really have some patience with because they can 
some years just not give you much of any crop because they they don't have those resistance right. Right. in them until you've planted them long enough in in your own landscape in your own gardens uh peppers again i'm still looking for disease resistance i'm not i haven't found that peppers have lost any real flavor um but then again i don't try to grow the biggest bell pepper out there i want a nice pepper for stuffed peppers or or you know just cut up for salad or in sauce and things uh green beans can be put in the ground your cabbage um, you're done with your cabbage and cauliflower and things like that if they're in the ground you can let them see if they will finish up for you Um, i wouldn't give them too much longer if they're taking up space that you can use for warm season things your green beans can go in the ground uh eggplant and things like that i might even give them a few more weeks just because they seem to like it a little bit warmer even though we seem plenty warm those night times are a little chilly for for some of those that they just may just sit there versus doing much of any growing um i said the green beans um trying to remember what else oh squash and cucumbers those you can start now i put mine in pots to start them with in the in the little peat pots or anything like that your empty uh, yogurt container doesn't matter uh and and grow them to a little bit of size so that when i put them in the garden again they're bigger and they've not been been bothered by pest and other pressures while they're small and so I'm apt to get a better harvest out of them when I when they do go in the ground mm-hmm. before the bugs find them. So, so, speaking of bugs, I was yeah. telling you earlier that one of the signs of spring that I always see, and I saw them the other day, right. was the the caterpillar right. nest in the yeah, tree. Yeah, tent caterpillars. Yeah. Now I saw this in the in the uh, in Silver Springs. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm guessing, you know, okay, right. it's basically in the woods. Right. So they're it's, fine. It's do you get rid of them if you find them in your tree in your yard? I, I would. Um, they're hard to get rid of in the trees in the yard because sometimes they're just up too high. Right. Because right, right. just spraying a, a pesticide up in the air is not going to get them. You have to, you know, you, you have to get it inside that, that webbing. That tent is very, it's actually waterproof. Yeah. You know, like, like, you know. Isn't that amazing, really? It, it is. It's, but you, so you'd have to get your pest control inside of that. Some people will gather, get a stick, long stick, just sort of gather it up, uh, burn the stick when burn you're it. done, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and get rid of them. Cause they're going after the, they'll get on the, um, cherry laurels, the, the, I think they'll get up in the Chickasaw plums. You'll find them in a lot of the, and fruiting trees, uh, not your citrus, but your other, you know, uh, a lot of your native trees as well and they they're just kind of a pain they're the big long um kind of a pretty little cat well pretty good sized caterpillar but makes a nice butterfly or is that a moth no that one's a moth but i mean he's there's still those are the ones that children play with (laughs) they won't they won't sting you you. right they don't sting you and they're kind of cute and they 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 somewhat inchy around when yeah. they walk around yeah, right, and, right, right. Um, those were the ones that kids <laughs> played with i know we did when we were kids all right i got my trivia question right. ready now, this got? is for a 20 dollar gift certificate to bob wines according to the information i got the shamrock original word was shamrog or mm-hmm. something like that which is gaelic and, and it means young clover uh and many types of clover are considered shamrocks and so back in the St. Patrick Day, he would use this shamrock, the three leaves, to represent and teach about Jesus with the Trinity, uh, Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Ghost. Spirit, okay. When he found a four-leaf clover, what symbol, what did he say the fourth leaf symbolized? Okay, because so the three is the Trinity. The, the three Father, is the Trinity. Yeah. What did he say, what did he teach that the, when he found a fourth one, what did he say that the fourth leaf represented? Ah. In, in his teachings, using the uh, the three leaf shamrock, and every now and then the the, the fourth the, one, right? Which that, I guess the whole lucky thing was something that came later. So I'll just okay. tell you that in advance. It was had wasn't, nothing, had to, do nothing to do with luck. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> so there was one so other there goes thing. My thought no. <laughs> that Saint Patrick, I guess that was his name, right? Saint Patrick, whatever his name was well, at the time. We, yeah. <laughs> the guy we call Saint Patrick when he was teaching, he 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 taught the Celts. Is that how you said mm-hmm. that Celts about the Holy Trinity, the three leaves. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the th- there was a fourth leaf on some of them. He said that represented... What? What? It is something religious, so I'll tell you that. Do, 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 wow, this is a Googleable one, right? It'd be. 
So I'll, I'll fill uh, fill in the blank. I'll make fill it a little. Bit. Oh, somebody's calling. Oh, Let me see. Go. I'll help you out. You get twenty dollars with this one. Come on. What do you think he said it represented? I think it represented the cross. So. Uh, uh, well, in a sense, I guess you could say that. What uh, you got it? It said God's grace. Okay. So I guess the cross, in a way, represents God's grace because right. He's right. He gives us a ticket out of here, right? Right. Or something. All right. Uh, what's your first name? Uh, Grady. Grady, you got it. You got a $20 gift certificate to Bob Wines. Super. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I have to be careful with the way I... I mean, it's not what it said. It didn't say it's that. Right, but right. God's great, I guess. I it's it close enough. Yeah, I just want to give enough. these away, you yeah. know. <laughs> we're, well, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're pushing the top of the oh, hour yes, here. Oh, yes, we sure so. are. <laughs> All right, well, let me... Where's your song? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Fell down yeah. on the... Fell down on the job there. <clears throat> Here we you go. Gotta, gotta get us Thank you. In. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Thanks, This Larry. is WOCA Ocala. Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The controversial letter from Republican lawmakers to Iran is being raised by Tehran at nuclear talks in Switzerland. 47 Republican senators warned Iran's leaders that any deal could collapse the day President Obama leaves office. The critics' fear is that an agreement to curb Iran's nuclear activities may not be strict enough, leaving open the possibility for Iran to build a nuclear bomb. Fox Radio Simon Owen. A scare in the air last night for passengers on board a United flight heading from D. C to Denver. Passenger reportedly becoming violent, rushing toward the cockpit, eventually being restrained by other passengers. The plane turning around. Officials say that person's been taken to a local hospital for evaluation. And arraignment today for a 15-year-old Connecticut boy in the stabbing of a man who accidentally spilled coffee on him. Fox News. We report. You decide. I'm a state-of-the-art 60-inch flat-screen TV. And I mean, not to brag or anything, but if a burglar ever breaks into this place, I'm pretty certain I'm the first thing he's going to steal. I mean, it's not like he's going to take that recliner over there. <laughs> or that coffee table. <laughs> Your stuff can't protect itself. That's why the GEICO Insurance Agency helps make it easy to switch and save on renter's insurance. Renter's insurance will cover personal property loss or damage as well as provide liability protection. Visit GEICO.com today. You're running your business, and we at Wix.com know things can get stressful. But creating your website doesn't have to be. With Wix, you can create a professional website all by yourself. It's easy and free. You don't have to be a programmer. Just drag and drop everything into place. It's your website, your style. Show the world what you can do. Go to Wix.com and create your own stunning website today. It's easy and free. Today in Florida Ag News, I'm a Southeast Agnet. This Wednesday, March the 18th, will be National Agriculture Day, spotlighting American agriculture and serving as a reminder that agriculture is a part of all of us. And the U.S. Agriculture Safety and Health Centers is just one of the many organizations taking part in this annual event, joining producers, ag associations, corporations, students, and government organizations in marking this occasion. The U.S. Ag Centers are promoting the theme, Celebrating Safe and Healthy Ag Workers, on this 42nd anniversary of National Ag Agriculture Day. National Ag Day, hosted by the Agriculture Council of America, will be celebrated in classrooms and communities across the country. Efforts will be underway to encourage every American to understand how food and fiber products are produced, to appreciate the role agriculture plays in providing safe, abundant, and affordable products, and to value the role of agriculture in maintaining a strong economy. If you'd like to learn more about National Agriculture Day, go to this website. It's agday.org. A lot of people think I'm superstitious. I never step on cracks. I never keep black cats on the ranch. I never open umbrellas indoors, not even in the barn. And I never let a young calf go unvaccinated. Because young calves are up against a whole lot more than you think. And I'm not just talking about bad luck, but stuff that even their mama's milk can't protect them from in the long run. Like BVD type 1B, the most common subtype of BVD in infected calves. That's why I vaccinate them with Pyramid 5 Plus Pre-Sponse SQ. It's the only approved combination vaccine that...